Hey guys and welcome to Vancouver! Now, as you can tell, it's a bit of a miserable day. Unfortunately, the weather gods have not hit us kindly in Vancouver like they did in Canmore and Banff. It is set to rain pretty much every day we are here. Yep, it's raining. Again! So, luckily our Airbnb had some umbrellas we could borrow. But we have just taken the bus to Granville Island where we are heading to the local market to have a wander. Hoping it's indoors, I believe it is, but otherwise just having a bit of an explore around here today. Guys, this place is a little overwhelming. There is so much choice. There's like every single food cuisine. There's fresh baked goods. We have picked up some donuts from Lee's, which is a donut shop that is all around Vancouver, not just in the markets, but we could not resist. But we might have to pick up a few other things to try because there is so much to choose from. Ah. On to our second course. I've gone with a burrito and Stace has gone with some tacos. Our bellies are very full now. So we're going to try and walk off some of the food by walking across one of the bridges that connects Granville Island to mainland. I don't know if it's possible, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. But first, Stace has decided that we're going to take a little detour through the kids market that is right beside Granville Market. Well guys! Can confirm you can walk over Granville Bridge. It is a bit of a journey to get to, I guess, the mouth of the bridge. A little bit of backtracking away from Vancouver before you come back. Back onto bridge. the actual road. But we made it. We are on our way. And I have to say, the views from the bridge are pretty spectacular. We are now beginning our walk along the coast, starting off with Sunset Beach. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It's not the most beautiful beach I've ever seen, but for an inner city beach, it's not bad at all. It has sand. Granted, the weather is again terrible today, but it's called Sunset Beach for a reason. It must be a pretty good spot for the sunset and you can't complain with sand and water. We have now made it to 217.5 Arc X13. Please explain. I read that off screen, I did not memorize it, but that is a sculpture here on Sunset Beach. Now the sculpture is named that name, I won't repeat it because it was very difficult to memorize, because it refers to the precise degree and number of arcs in its composition. So that's pretty interesting. Now the reason for the shape is debatable among locals. Some people say it just perfectly frames the sunset, while others say that it reflects the ribcage of a whale very well, kind of reminding us of global warming. Pretty interesting and pretty cool. We've now wandered down to the point where Sunset Beach meets English Bay and we've seen the Anuk Shuk, as you can see behind me. So I believe this comes from the Inuit culture and is usually used as a navigational symbol or landmark, but it sits here where the two beaches meet. I believe it was donated here and sits here, but it's a pretty cool landmark, I have to say, and a very cool point along the coast. As you guys can see, the rain is not letting up. It is here to stay as we walk past English Bay Beach, which is pretty similar looking to Sunset Beach. A little bit larger, I'd say it'd get pretty busy in summer, but not so busy on a day like today. And we are walking towards a monument, a pretty famous monument. It's called Amazing Laughter, and I'm pretty excited to see it. And guys, here it is amazing laughter i have to say it's way bigger than i thought each cult sculpture is almost well almost double my height very tall maybe like one and three quarters of me very very tall there are a lot of them it depicts the artist smiling and laughing hysterically some say he's laughing joyfully some say it's cynically the artist will not disclose which one it is it is definitely a cool art piece i, I really do like it you can walk through and uh, it's hard not to smile when you look at the faces on the statues. We have now made it to Canada Place, as you can see behind me. Now, from what I can gather from the internet, I think that this is like a place where worldwide events occur. I have to say, I'm a little underwhelmed. I think it's mostly to do with the weather. As you can see, it's a terrible day. But I hear that there are light projections at night on the sails, which I think would be pretty cool and would definitely make it worthwhile visiting at night. Welcome back to another day here in Vancouver. It has not stopped raining, like literally, it hasn't stopped raining. I think since we arrived, there's actually a rainfall warning for today. That is how wet it is. Since we arrived a few days ago, 
Vancouver has had the second wettest day of the entire year as well as the wettest day since February which makes doing tourist activities a little bit difficult there's only so much you can do with an umbrella and a raincoat so we have wandered back into downtown checked out some of the shopping centers and have wound up at none other than Tim Hortons if you are struggling to find things to do in Canada Tim Hortons will always be there Tim is probably your best Canadian friend so we got ourselves some Tim bits because we're feeling very sorry for ourselves an iced cap for the first time which is apparently a Canadian must try it's essentially an iced cappuccino it's very sweet but very delicious and I tried a pumpkin spice latte from Tim's because I really liked it when I got it from Starbucks in Banff so what are we gonna do for the rest of the day probably nothing guys I'm very sorry but it's cold it's wet miserable hey guys and welcome to our fourth and last day here in vancouver i'm sure you're probably thinking fourth day we haven't actually seen you do a whole lot but we've had very rainy weather which is pretty typical for vancouver this time of year so it's not like we're super unlucky or anything although it is looking very nice here next week which is a bit unfortunate but we have only done a couple things each day on our first day which we didn't film a whole lot of because it was really raining quite hard but we wandered through gastown we saw the famous steam clock we then wandered through downtown Vancouver and had a look around there as well and then down Davie Street and Davie Village and had a stroll through there so we did a few bits and pieces but like I said we didn't film a whole lot because it was super rainy. On our second day we obviously went to Granville Island and explored the market and then explored some of the beaches and yesterday we had a super lazy day and just ventured out to the CF Pacific Centre which is just a shopping centre in downtown Vancouver but today we've headed to one of the city's top attractions which is Stanley Park. Now pretty much everyone we spoke to recommended we bike ride around the park but again the weather <laughs> is not too great so probably not bike riding weather but we are here for a stroll. There's lots to do in this park I believe. Vancouver Aquarium sits within Stanley Park so we're gonna have a stroll and see what we can get up to. Now Stanley Park is quite large. We are making our way, we got off the bus and now making our way to see the totem poles and they're about 1.5 kilometers from where we are now. But yeah, like I said, bike riding seems to be the way to go to get around the park if you do want to see all of it. But we'll see how much we can get up to by foot and let you know. So if you are looking to bike ride around Stanley Park, there are bikes for hire within the park. I believe you probably just download an app and pay for those. But I think there are also some bike rental companies in the area as well if you want to pick up one there but that is handy if you do get to the park and decide you want a bike. What a beautiful day here in Vancouver. It's literally just white. <laughs> we have literally, this is, this is not the camera, this is what we're actually seeing. <laughs> we have been living in a cloud the last few days, literally. Up on the 25th floor of our apartment, living in a cloud, a rain cloud. No, I think Stanley Park is meant to be quite pretty, which I'm sure it is. We have, we're kind of doing the outskirts at the moment, but after where we spent the last two weeks, I mean, don't know if anything can quite live up to that. If you haven't seen those videos, make sure you check them out. We did a video in Canmore, two videos in Banff, and one video of our road trip to Jasper and back. But yeah, I feel like, I feel like nature's, nature expectations are up here. For an inner city, this is pretty much as good as it gets. And the colours in the tree, I guess because of the time of year, we see bright red, we see yellow, we see green. What more could you want from an inner city? It's lovely. <laughs> don't you just love those autumn colours? You don't see colours like that extreme in Melbourne. Just look at all the colours in the trees. Help me. This is definitely a really nice place to come for a walk or a bike ride. Currently walking along the water, but directly across from us on the other side of the water is Canada Place, which is where we were the other day. So that's nice to see it from a different angle. And today there is a cruise ship there, a massive one. So we like cruise ships, don't we, Stace? In fact, by the time that you're seeing this video, chances are we have been on the first ever Disney cruise leaving from Australia. If you haven't seen it, we'll put it up there. I'm sure it was an amazing time! 
Now where we have come now is in itself a reason to come to Stanley Park, but obviously there are a lot more reasons. I just think this is really, really cool. We're looking at all the totem poles, which were the Columbia Indians coat of arms. And each carving has a meaning. For example, the eagle represents the kingdom of the air. The whale represents the lordship of the sea, the wolf, the genius of the land, and so on. There are many different animals carved into each pole, each with their own meaning and story. And I just think that they're amazing. Now here is something you do not see in Australia. A warning sign about coyotes denning in the area. Now if you've seen our videos from the Banff region, Canmore, etc. You would know that Stace and I created a Canadian Big Five. And coyotes were on that list. Did we see one? You have to watch to figure it out. I must admit this is a very, very beautiful park and I bet that it'd be 10 times better with a blue sky, some rays of sunlight, not as much rain, but even with the rain, it's very beautiful. Guys, I have found the tree from Pocahontas. Old Lady Willow, or I can't remember the name, I have to watch the movie soon, but it is huge and I think it spoke to me. You will hit 3,000 subscribers soon. Wow, if the tree said it, it must be true. That is so exciting. Faith and I were just saying that Stanley Park is like no park we've been to so far on this trip. And we've been to quite a few. We went to Hyde Park in London. We went to Vondel Park in Amsterdam. We went to El Retiro Park in Madrid, just to name a few. But none of those parks were also bordered by water like the way Stanley Park is. And I think the seawalk kind of says all of that. You can walk directly around the park, it takes ages because it's massive, but be sandwiched between the park and the seawater. And that is very, very cool. Now, so far, despite all the rain, we have found Vancouver a very easy city to walk and get public transport around. We've used the trains and the buses. I think the trains they call the Sky Train. And fairly affordable too. The Sky Train, I believe, cost us, I think it was $6, but we used it twice within maybe two to three hours, so that covered those journeys. And I think the bus journeys have been about 350 Canadian dollars, so not too bad at all. And very easy. Bus stops are very easy to find and very easy to get from one form of transport to another. Speaking of which, we are leaving Stanley Park now. We're getting the bus to Gastown. Well guys, welcome to Gastown, a district that's very, very unique in both pathways, in terms of brick pathways, but also architecture and atmosphere. It has a bit of an industrial feel to it. It's a very cool hipster vibe, very cool lamp posts. I don't know how, to, how else to describe it. It feels a bit like London-y. Very unique though. And it is definitely somewhere that you have to check out if coming to Vancouver. We actually came here the other day, our first day in Vancouver. We got rained out real bad because we came to see the steam clock, the famous world's first steam clock. Seriously, how cool is Gastown? Brick pathways, brick buildings, lit up lamp posts. I think I actually almost think it would look better in the rain, so we're lucky that it is raining. Now, as I said, this is the world's first steam clock, which is pretty impressive, and I believe it steams every 15 minutes or so. Four puffs of steam, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It toots. <laughs> it gets us. I, I'll Google it. Guys, while waiting for the clock to steam, we have encountered a bit of a, a bit of a mistake, a bit of an error. The clock is not right. Similar to when we were in Munich, when that big glockenspiel clock was not on Apple time. It seems that the steam clock is also not on Apple time. Who's correct? Now is the moment of truth. That answers my question. The Westminster chimes have answered my question. The steam is on Apple time. The clock itself, I mean, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Guys, I've just had a thought. Do we think Gastown is called Gastown because it is home of the steam clock and steam is gas? Come to think of it, is steam a gas? Or is steam that kind of state between water and gas? Please explain. I'll Google it and I'll put the results in here. Either I'm a genius or an idiot. I'm steam in the rain. Just give them a 
What a glorious feeling! I'm happy today! They hate me! And just like that, our time in Vancouver and Canada is up, which is really sad. We've had a great time in Canada. Also, sorry that this video is very likely very short. The weather really messed us around and we just couldn't do everything that we wanted to do, but hopefully you got a little bit of like a little bit of information from this video. We still had a good time ending here with our nice skyline view of Vancouver. And tomorrow we are gonna be somewhere very magical. Wait, hang on, I went the wrong way. If you know what I mean. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.